there's an increasing number of Mormons or members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the world today. And I think a lot of people are curious and wonder what our church is all about. Being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints compels me to help other people. And because the church gives me those opportunities to help other people, I realize that I truly am a disciple of Jesus Christ as the Savior defined Christianity. By this shall all men know ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. We believe in the prophets and the teachings of the Old Testament. We believe in the New Testament and all that was taught about Jesus Christ. When Jesus lived on earth, he organized his church. When Jesus was crucified, his apostles were killed. As time went on, controversy and contentions grew over how to practice Christ's teachings. In the early 1800s, there was a young man named Joseph Smith in the United States. Joseph Smith was a 14-year-old boy. He wanted to know which of the religions was true. One day, he was reading the scriptures, and he came across this verse in James chapter 1, verse 5, which says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Joseph Smith prayed to God for answers to his questions. And the heavens were opened before him. Heavenly Father and his son Jesus Christ appeared to the boy Joseph Smith. Throughout the history of the world, the Lord has communicated through prophets to his people. Given what we're up against, how much more important and relevant is a mouthpiece of the Lord today? Eventually, Joseph Smith was led to translate an ancient record called the Book of Mormon, which teaches of Jesus Christ and complements the Bible. Jesus Christ called 12 apostles and additional disciples called 70 to help him teach the gospel and serve people. Today, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has the same organization. We believe that Jesus Christ is the head of the church, that he has called a prophet, and that we also have 12 apostles. The church is organized in a unique way. First of all, family is the most important organization in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. All of the organization is set to help and support the families, your father and mother and their kids, the singles. Each individual we consider as a family. When you really think about and practice what that means, it means that God cares about our marriage. God cares about our family. He cares about the way I raise my children and the effort that I put to that. He cares about my relationship with my wife and how I treat my wife. The gospel teaches us that our families can continue to be as a family even after we die. Today we came to the temple to get married. It is not a marriage just for the life, but also for the eternity. I wanted to see the temple and took my breath away. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> There's a certain feeling of peace and a sacred feeling in the spirit. We have meeting houses where we go every Sunday. But the temple is different. In the biblical period, the idea of a temple is it's a special place where God's presence is always to be found. This place, the temple, is a very special place where we perform sacred ordinances for us. Members of our church pray in the temple. We promise to live commandments with a greater sense of commitment. It's also a place where we perform ordinances such as baptisms for our ancestors that didn't receive those ordinances while they were on the earth. We are from India. This is uh, my family and I am so excited to be here in this temple, Hong Kong temple. It is a very big blessing for us. We are blessed to come to this Hong Kong temple and we feel that God himself has invited us. My family, many blessings, very happy. We love families and we know that the peoples of the world love their families too. And that connecting is a rich and significant experience. Because of our belief in the importance of families, the church makes family history records available. We've been going out into 
parishes and filming these records for anyone that wants to look at them. We have over 4,500 family history centers that are around the world. The same name? Yeah, the same, same name. name. Wow, yes. I'm not a member of the church, but I appreciate the ability to use this library. It's open to everyone. I'm not a member of the Mormon church, but I'm very impressed with what's been provided for and the quality of the whole setup. There's something remarkable about being linked to your family. It's tender to me to feel I belong to other people. The bliss of our church has brought me love within the family and within the community that I live. Everyone I see, I see that he is my brother or our sister. Our partnership with the LDS Church is absolutely essential for the Red Cross to be able to fulfill its mission every single day. With us, the church has been there in so many different parts of the world in large numbers. It's a privilege to be able to work with such a caring group of people. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has many organized efforts in place to help those in need, and each member helps to fund this work. Once a month, millions of members all around the world fast. The money that we did not spend for those two meals that we fast, that money is given to the welfare system of the church in the form of fast offerings. I don't have much money, but for the love of the Lord, I give my offerings. When I give my offerings, I feel great joy. The sacred stewardship of all the bishops throughout the world is to use those fast offerings as they are directed by the Savior to help the needy and the poor. The church equips the bishops with many resources. For example, in some parts of the world, the church owns commercial-sized farms and factories that are run almost exclusively by volunteers, where a variety of food is grown and canned to help those in need. In parts of the world where there is no church-organized food production, the bishops use the fast offering funds to purchase food and other commodities to help. We provide assistance through food, but then we also go beyond that and we provide monetary assistance, employment services, adoption services, addiction recovery, and marriage and family counseling. We also seek to help those in need through a number of initiatives, such as our emergency response program. The most critical thing about disaster response is moving large groups of people to the site of a disaster. And there is no one that can mobilize groups of people better than the LDS Church. Even though we are not members of their church, we always receive their support. We have a clean water program that has assisted over a million people worldwide by creating safe water sources. A big thank you to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for saving lives, for saving children who would have died we appreciate it so much. Our immunization program works to stop preventable diseases from taking the lives of many children around the world. We also have a mobility program that provides prosthetics and wheelchairs. We train hospitals all around the world in vision care and neonatal resuscitation. I thought he wasn't going to live. I thank God for everything he has given me. For the baby who is making good progress, I thank God. Prayers are answered most of the time, I think, by God using other people. Well, I pray that he'll use us. I pray that we'll be the answer to people's prayers. I'm amazed at every aspect of every life that the LDS Church touches throughout the world. Our faith and the religion that we practice is not a Sunday religion. Mm -hmm. It's a lifetime. Yes. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's how we live. The fruits of the gospel have always been good to me. They have always brought me joy and happiness and purpose in my life. So I know that the source must also be good and true. I have experienced how the gospel has changed my life and brought much happiness to my life and that of my family. So I couldn't just wait, but to come and help people to know that there is a restored gospel that can actually change their lives, and bring joy and lasting peace to their hearts, families, and in their homes. Serving a mission is a voluntary service. We are here because we love Christ, and we love these people. This is a work of love, and we want to serve them. We want to let them know that Jesus loved them.